Hi, everyone. Happy Friday. Welcome. Um, thanks for joining us for today's session on CK12 simulations and Plix interactives. Uh, we are coming to you from the CK12 headquarters in Palo Alto, California. My name is Lindsay, and I'm a member of the team. I'll be moderating, the, moderating today's webinar. Before I introduce you to Katie and Sonia, who will be demonstrating our Plix and simulations, I just want to thank you all for joining us for this program. This is our last core session of our two weeks of live sessions. I know a lot of you have been with us on this two-week journey. Um, we're really, really happy that you chose to spend part of your time um, this summer for many of you here in the U.S. Um, working on professional development here with us. Um, screens here. If you do have any questions about our program, we have a team of people here in the room who are ready to answer any of your questions. In the Zoom window, you guys are chatting away. In that chat window, just make sure that you're sending your messages to all panelists and attendees so that everybody can see your message. And then as you have Sims and Plix related questions during this webinar, post them in the Q&A window and we'll make sure our presenters address them. Just a reminder that we do have a session resource page. We're gonna post that in the chat window here in just a second. It's also in our Google Classroom if you would like to reference that. But without further ado, why don't I introduce you to Katie and she'll talk you through what we're gonna be covering today. Thanks, Lindsay. And thank you to everyone who joined us today for today's session on CK12 simulations and Plix interactives. Today, we're going to highlight three different types of interactives. We will scale up from manipulatives found throughout the new CK12 interactive flexbooks to the diverse plicks to the full portal simulations. Interactive flexbooks allow students to actively experiment with math concepts within the book itself. We will highlight science and math plicks, which stands for play, learn, interact, explore. This tool allows users to animate ideas through simple interactions. Also, we will be discussing our science simulations, which enable learners to discover the scientific principles that govern a real world setting in a fun and interactive way. Before we get into the core content of the webinar, we would like to find out a little bit more about your familiarity with these interactives. You'll see a poll here in a few seconds that will prompt you to respond to a question. So here's the question. How familiar are you with CK12 simulations and Plix interactives? You can select all answer choices that apply. I am new to them. I use Plix occasionally. I use simulations occasionally. I use Plix frequently and I use simulations frequently. I'll pause for a few seconds to let you finish answering this poll. Remember, please select all that apply to you. Awesome, thank you so much. Okay, so it looks like a lot of you are new to our interactives, so this is a great time for us to tell you all about them. Now, let's move on and discuss interactives. In this first section of the webinar, I'll introduce CK12's newest books, the Interactive Flex books. Next, we'll talk about Plix Interactives and Plix Corner. Our goal is to get you ready to try interactives in the first week of school. CK12 recently released Common Core Align Flexbooks filled with interactives. This is a section from the Algebra One book. Students can read through the text, look at pictures, and manipulate graphs, figures, and equations without having to leave the book. In this book, the interactives are designed to be an integral part of the lesson, not just supplementary. This is cutting edge online textbook technology. Interactive flexbooks are online textbooks that can be populated with digital manipulatives and Plex interactives, which we'll go into in depth later in this webinar. We currently have Algebra 1, Geometry, and Algebra 2 interactive books up on the site. Each curriculum is rigorous and fully aligned with the Common Core State Standards. Like everything at CK12, the books are free. To find the books, just scroll down to the bottom of the CK12 homepage and click Common Core Math under the Buy CK12 title. You'll find this link at the bottom of many CK12 pages. 
the link takes you to a web page with this URL. The functionality of the interactives are tightly integrated with each course. For example, this interactive is designed for a lesson on comparing function types, linear, exponential, quadratic, and rational. The lessons in the interactive flexbooks are also full of real-world applications and plicks. Plicks are similar to the embedded interactives that we just looked at, except plicks can be accessed outside of the textbook, plicks have more features, and they cover a wide breadth of math and science concepts. You can learn more about the interactive flexbooks by watching the Common Core Math on CK12 webinar. Previous recordings are available on the CK12 YouTube channel and at the CEP Google Classroom. All right, now let's check out PLIX. PLIX stands for Play, Learn, Interact, Explore. It is a visual learning modality that allows users to animate ideas in a concept through simple interactions. We have over 1,130 interactives that span both math and science concepts and can be filtered by subject, keyword, concept, or standards. Also, like Plix, also Plix, like everything offered by CK12, is free to all users. All you have to do is sign into CK12 to access them. After you've opened up a Plix, the first thing you do is read the description on the left. The description explains what the interactive is about and provides directions on how to interact with it. Next, use the interactive by following the prompt in the instructions. In the interactive, you can explore the concept. If you need to start over, there's a refresh button at the bottom that you can use. After you've used the interactive, click the challenge button below the description. This opens up the challenge questions. The questions often build upon one another to help students reach a deeper understanding of a concept. The final question is a discussion question that you can use for a class conversation. This is a great place to think about differentiating learning by having students try the first few questions or work their way through to the higher level thinking and discussion questions. As a side note, don't worry about trying to write down all the teaching strategies that we mentioned. A full list was posted earlier in the chat window and we'll also send it as a follow-up to this webinar. Along the toolbar at the top of Aplix, you'll see that there are even more features. We'll discuss more of these features as we go. And now let's dive into Aplix. This Plix is about lunar phases. The description of this Plix includes a prompt on how to interact with it. Notice that it says to drag the red point. Moving the red point changes the phases of the moon in accordance with the labels on the slider. At the top right of this Plix is an orange button to assign to class. You can assign Plix to students in a CK12 class group by clicking on that button. If you want to learn more about assignments, feel free to ask us in the Q&A window. Let's look at another Plix for a second. Before we explore the Plix itself, you can see in the top right the options to give feedback and adjust the size of the text by clicking the icons in the upper right corner of the screen. You'll notice that this Plix, about rules for dilation, has the same description and prompt area the simple interaction, and challenge questions. This Plix uses two of the most frequently seen question types, multiple choice and select all that apply. If students are struggling with a question, they can often find hints to help answer the questions. Note that if you get an answer wrong, you'll see the option to show the correct answer. Once again, this is a learning, not an assessment tool. So students will be able to get immediate feedback and guidance when they attempt a question. Students can also use the learn more option to read about the matching concept and gain a better understanding of it. Encouraging students who are struggling to access these resources is another great way to personalize and support student learning. Okay, so now that you've seen two clicks, you may be wondering where you can get your hands on them. 
You can access our Plix through the website on any computer or tablet with a screen size of nine inches or larger. You can also use the search bar to find content and modalities, including Plix, or you could open Plix from within any concept. You can access Plix through the circular Plix icon on the home page. Alternatively, you can jump directly to the Plix browse page using www.ck12.org slash Plix. Let's see what that looks like. So once you're on the home page, you have a few options. Remember to sign in if you haven't, and then you can choose your branches. This will help you filter your Plix according to areas you're teaching. If you've done this and you want to update those branches, you could click on Change Branches. In addition to searching on the main site, you can search within the Plix browse page. Here you can search for a title, concept, or even CCSS or, or NGSS standard. You can find Plix in all branches of math and science. To achieve this depth of coverage, we've developed some really diverse Plix. Some Plix are exploratory based, while others check student understanding. Some Plix are abstract, and others are based in the real world. Let's dive into a few examples. So these exploration-based Plix are sandboxes in which a student can play around and experiment with an idea. In the distance between two points taxicab distance Plix, students explore two different ways to find the distance between two locations. In the Ohm's Law Plix, students explore how Ohm's Law affects the current in a circuit. A great teaching strategy would be to have students explore a Plix and then share their different experiences and what they learned from each other. In some clicks like these, students can get feedback to check their understanding of a concept. The structure of water clicks allows students to rotate water molecules to form hydrogen bonds. In the law of cosines clicks, students find the missing side lengths of triangles using the law of cosines. These plicks could be used as a review of a concept so students could see how well they understand a concept before an assessment. In many plicks, students can manipulate graphs, diagrams, or variables. In this sine and cosine plic, students can explore how the values of trig functions relate to a given angle. In the refraction band gap plics, users change the band gap of a substance to see if a photon can fit through. As a lesson, you could have students screenshot a few different states for a graph or set of variables and explain what changed and how the change affected the graph or situation. Some plics use real world contexts to teach math and science concepts. In the Rainforest Map Quest plics, students can locate villages on a map using a scale. In the rate of dissolving sugar plicks, students observe what happens to a sugar cube in tea as the temperature changes. For these real world plicks, try having students brainstorm other applications of a particular concept or even design their own plicks to address a concept. As you've seen throughout these plicks, there are a number of different ways to have students work with and use plicks. In class, as a warm-up, exit pass, or to explore a concept. At home, as a homework assi assignment, or students can post answers to Plix questions on CK12. To differentiate instruction using the challenge questions, learn more, and explorations. Or to foster conversation. The last question of each Plix is a discussion question, and some lead to Plix Corner. So I've mentioned Plix Corner a couple of times now. Let's talk about what it is and how to find it. The CK12 Cafe is a place where you can ask, help, and share with other users. Just click the link to Cafe at the top of the CK12 homepage to get there. We're going to enter Plix Corner where users answer intriguing Plix discussion questions. Here's a great example of a discussion in the Plix Corner. The Plix math question of the week was the sets and symbols size of infinite sets Plix. 
you can assign the Plix featured in a Plix Corner post and have your students join this conversation and discuss their ideas with classmates and students across the world. One of the standards of mathematical practice is construct viable arguments and critique the reasoning of others. The Plix Corner is a great place for students to discuss their reasoning about a topic. Each week, CK12 features one math Plix and one science Plix to ask questions of the week. We have been noticing more and more classes are leaving answers to Plix questions in mass, sometimes with notes of encouragement from their teacher. If you'd like to see a specific Plix featured that you want your students to respond to in Plix Corner, let us know. On the next slide, we'll tell you how to get in touch with us. I'd like to challenge you to get involved. Try out Plix and the interactive Flexbooks. Share interactives that you love with your students and other teachers. Tell us at CK12 what you think by reaching out to us at Facebook, Twitter, or email the interactives team directly at interactives at ck12.org. If you're interested in creating your own Plix, send us an email. We're opening up the Plix creation tool to a few select teachers. Give it a shot. All right, have fun exploring our new interactives. So I've told you a lot about Plix. Now it's your turn to find a Plix that you could use in your classroom. Press escape to escape from the Zoom window. Open up your internet browser and go to ck12.org. For those of you staying on the Zoom window, you can watch me find Plix on the CK12 site. All right, so here we are at the CK12 homepage. It's time for your challenge. We're gonna navigate from the CK12 homepage to the Plix browse page. Scroll on down until you get to these nice circles and we're gonna click on the Plix one. If it's your first time on the Plix Browse page, or if you've not signed into CK12, you will be prompted with a tutorial on how to use Plix. All right, with that, this might be a good time to stop and see what questions we have coming in about Plix. Before we move into the second half of this webinar where Sonia discusses simulations, please join us back in your Zoom window to participate in the chat and Q&A. Awesome, Katie, we just have one question in Q&A right now, but um, hopefully as people were just exploring in their own browsers, they're going to have some more questions here. Put them in the Q&A window and we'll answer them. Um, the first one here is, are interactive Flexbooks um, and just Flexbooks the same thing? If they aren't, are there interactive science Flexbooks? Yeah, so uh, there's some similarities with regular Flexbooks and interactive Flexbooks. Um, the interactive books are in the same wonderful CK12 format, except that they have embedded interactives in them. Regular flex books do not. And these regular, uh, these embedded interactives are really central to the learning. So a lot of the lesson and the questions really structure themselves around the experience of the interactive. And so we're really trying to make the most of this digital platform for education. We don't currently have any interactive flex books for science yet, but that doesn't mean that it's off the table. It could be in the works. One user said that she didn't see where you clicked because she was getting on the CK12 site. So maybe just show them from the homepage again how you got to the flex. Oh yeah, no problem. So going back to the homepage, ck12.org. So here we are at the top of the page, and you just scroll down through all these branches until you get to these beautiful little circular icons. And we've got the Plix one here. You click on that, and it takes you directly to the CK12 browse page. Okay, a user wants to know, is there a list of the Plix, or do I have to scroll through them all? And then you do not have NC Essential Standards for Earth Science loaded yet. Um, we don't have a full list of all the Plix. 
Um, so I understand there are a lot. So scrolling can be uh, a big task, but often I'll just use the search bar here and search for something. Um, and that way I can just look through all the clicks with that particular topic. Or if you even use the search bar on the CK12 homepage, Plix will show up on the list of all the modalities for whatever you're interested in. Um, and that's interesting to hear that the standards aren't listed for uh, earth science. I will look into that. Thank you for the input. All right, Karen wants to know, with customizing an assignment, a read, can we link a Plix? What are the best practices for people who want to get Plix into um, either, you know, they're customizing their own book from scratch or they're adapting one of our CK12 books? We've actually been getting that question a lot, which is really encouraging. I think it's awesome that people want to put Plix in their books. So currently the easiest way to do it is just to pull the URL. So you just highlight the HTTPS field, copy it from a Plix and plop it directly into the book or just add it as a hyperlink. All right, keep the questions coming into the Q&A window. I'm gonna take the screen back over from Katie and um, I wanna introduce you guys to my colleague, Sonia and she's gonna be talking about simulations. And then after the simulations demo, they're both gonna stay on and they're gonna be able to answer any additional questions that you guys have um, relating to Plix or Sims. Thank you so much, Lindsay. Hi, everyone out there. It was so fun to see you all introduce yourselves on the chat from all over. Happy Friday. And Katie, that was an awesome overview of Plix. So great job. I'm just really excited to be here this morning to show you all our CK12 interactive simulations, which we at CK12 lovingly refer to as Sims. They truly are a groundbreaking new type of digital learning tool, unlike really anything else out there, in that they overlay the scientific and mathematical principles onto a real world setting. These sims support inquiry-based learning and promote students to connect the often abstract STEM concepts with their everyday applications. Now they differ from the Plix interactives that Katie just reviewed in that they're almost more of a portal. They, they're meant to kind of pull students into this real world setting and there are multiple ways to interact within the setting and we try to connect many concepts together. But like the Plix and everything else on CK12, our sims are all free. You'll just simply have to sign in to access multiple sims or download the free app to your tablet device. And I'll talk a lot more about the app in a little bit. So in this part of the webinar, I'm planning to kind of show you how to navigate the sims browse page and help to familiarize you with the general structure of the sims. And I'll be sure to highlight the many embedded sim features and resources and share some ideas that I have for using the sims as an instructional tool in class or at home to differentiate instruction and to dispel some common science misconceptions, which I know is, is always a goal of science teachers. And, you know, really overall, like my main goal and takeaway that I, um, I hope you take away from this webinar like Katie's is just by the end you feel excited and equipped to use CK 12 simulations in your class. So my kind of best advice for you is just pick one sim and experiment with it. Even in that first week of school, I think your students will be really, really excited about it. Okay, so we'll just kind of start with um, sharing this picture with you. I used to be a classroom teacher, and this is a picture I took of a whiteboard in my physics class a few years ago. Don't judge, right? I spent my entire lunch period drawing this image for my students, and I was just trying to relate the law of reflection to what they see in a mirror with the tools that I had available, right? A whiteboard and some markers. Thankfully, CK12 has provided a much more compelling learning tool. And we teachers right now have time to eat our lunch. So thank you, CK12. Okay. 
the next slide here will show you the prom night sim. The result of the beautiful collaboration between science teachers, animators, and software developers at CK12. And it shows those same concepts of looking in a mirror, right, in a much more compelling way. So the prom night sim begins with an intriguing question. And then if you press play, it advances through an introductory video explaining the basic concepts and posing some further guiding questions to get students to think about the underlying physics in this real world scenario, right? Getting ready for the prom and looking at their reflection in the mirror. So I actually recorded this um, kind of in, in fast forward mode. So the normal introductory videos go a little, a little more slowly. So the next scene, if we say go to the sim, we refer to, as Katie mentioned earlier, like a sandbox. So the idea is it's this interactive environment that's meant for users to just play around, discover new things. And in an interactive environment, you'll almost always find sliders for certain physical variables and responsive animations or some graphs to illustrate the relationship. Now this next scene is, um, presents slider-based questions. So you can adjust the sliders and answer them. And finally, each simulation ends with a set of real-world examples that invite the students to kind of think about the applications of the underlying concepts in different physical situations to promote their continued learning. So hopefully after previewing this sim, you're really excited to see more, and there's a lot more. So there are many ways to access the sims from within the CK12 website, including that simulations icon on the homepage. It's right next to the Plix icon that Katie highlighted um, in her presentation. Also, this web address at the top there, www.ck12.org forward slash sims, provides a simple shortcut for you, your students, or colleagues to get to the sim browse page. So um, that's probably what I would post on my class website or share with my, you know, the science department, so on and so forth. In our collection of over 120 sims, we have swim meets and, you know, semi trucks and elevators, airplanes, right? All real world settings that are really hard to replicate in the classroom. Our collection of sims are currently divided into two branches, formally labeled as physics and chemistry. So we're now looking at the physics tab. You can see it highlighted on the top left. And the first row of sims feature three of my favorite for topics commonly taught in a physics classroom around the beginning of the school year. So on the far left there, the driverless car sim poses the opening question, how does a self-driving car know where to go? And prompt students to practice vector addition in a really fun and interactive way. The middle sim um, is called at the crossroads and you can use this sim to teach unit conversions. And then on the far right is um, one of my personal favorites, Erwin and Ruthie. So this sim is super fun. It allows students to adjust the velocity of two racing robots and, um, and they can learn all about motion and graphing motion. So like I said before, these are all scenarios that are really hard to replicate in the classroom. Now, although these sims are formally labeled physics, I do wanna really you know, emphasize that their topical coverage is broad. And we have sims that relate to concepts regarding physical science, earth science, astronomy, and math. So all of you out there who are not a physics teacher, I really just encourage you to visit the CK12 Sims Browse page, and I'm confident that you'll find something for your course and level. And just to be sure to convince you, um, I, I would like to highlight at this time some other Sims that could even be used to teach some important math concepts. So on the top left there is the portrait gallery sim. And this is a great sim that can be used to teach vector addition like the driverless car sim I mentioned. And it also um, highlights important concepts related to trigonometry. Now both the water fountain and archery sims have to do with projectile motion and involve parametric equations. 
And then on the bottom right there is the stadium wave sim that can be used for a more complicated sinusoid problem. Like I said earlier, although these sims are just labeled physics or chemistry, there really are many that I feel could be used to highlight the real world applications connected to a variety of STEM concepts. So now we kind of in this slide are going back to the Sims Browse page and I've clicked on that second tab you can see highlighted there that gives you access to 15 recently released chemistry Sims. Now these Sims are still in the beta stage of development. So all that means is that you'll see the beginning of the full structure that you see for the physics Sims. These chemistry uh, simulations all provide the microscopic explanations for the macroscopic observations of the world around us. And I really think this is probably the main goal for all of you chemistry teachers out there. So I do think that these sims can help you in that important work. The first three um, that you will find on this chem sims browse page are these here. So on the left, the going fishing sim, um, allows your students to explore what makes an object float or sink. And it it's really does a nice job of helping to visualize kind of what density means. And then in the middle there is the airbag sim. It allows students to investigate the chemical reactions that cause an airbag to inflate. And then on the right is the hot pack, cold pack sim. And, and this sim I just love. It provides a great everyday model for students to associate with exothermic and endothermic reactions. So I hope you'll explore and experiment with using these new sims in your classroom. And also, um, I please provide us with feedback. So in every single simulation, there's a link um, for feedback. And we do read that on a weekly basis, and we love to hear from you and um, work towards developing features at your request. Okay, another exciting announcement is that we offer a free CK12 physics simulation app for your iOS and Android tablet devices. So right there you can see on the Sims Browse page, if you click either of those two icons, you and your students can easily download the app for free at the App Store or the Google Play Store today. So just a few things that I wanna highlight about the app. So it is only for tablet devices. So if you're at home right now and you're on your phone looking for the app, um, you won't actually even see it available on your phones. It's only for a tablet device. And all of our Sims, whether accessed online or via the app require that nine inch screen or larger. And that's simply because the Sim interactive environment with the sliders, graphs, and animated responses, um, you really just couldn't have a meaningful learning experience on the small screen of a phone. So it requires that a little bit larger space. The exciting thing about the app is that it allows you and your students to download individual sims to your tablet devices for offline use. So I know that is like a big deal because if you were anything like me, right, using simulations in your class, I, you probably wasted a lot of precious class time, right, with loading the software, guiding students through multiple clicks to access the simulation. All of our sims, all of them, over 120, are HTML5 based and can be launched on our website or via the app with just one click. So just imagine this, a simple homework assignment involves asking your students to download a particular SIM to their tablet device the night before your class. And when prompted in class, they all launch the SIM quickly and easily without any threat of Wi-Fi or loading issues interrupting the lesson. We've worked really hard at CK12 to ensure that you never lose a learning moment in your classroom. So I really hope that you go after this webinar and download the app and explore and experiment with it. I think you'll be really pleased. Okay, so there are many ways to use the Sims Browse page to find a Sim for your particular class. So as Katie kind of demoed, you can simply scroll down. Um, you can also type keywords in that search bar. And we do offer a filter. So both the search bar and filter are highlighted there on the top left. 
Now, if you click on filter, you can filter the SIMS by concept or NGSS standards for both middle school and high school um, next generation science standards. And these concepts and standards are also listed under each simulation. So you can see them there. In addition, there is a worksheet link under each sim. So at the bottom, you could see the worksheet links highlighted for those three sims. And when you click on the worksheet arrow icon, so be sure to click on the arrow, a worksheet version of the sim will pop up that can easily be downloaded as a PDF. So here, if we had clicked on the Irwin and Ruthie worksheet, this is what you would see pop up. There are a variety of ways in which these worksheets can be used, but I think it's most important to note that all of the embedded features and content in the SIMS are accessible in worksheet format here. So if the internet is an issue at your school, or you'd like a handout that will help guide your students in using the SIMS, or even just if your students respond better to turning something in, I know my students did. These worksheet resources are currently available for all our physics sims, and the ChemSim worksheets will be coming down the road. So here are some images of the four main windows in our ramp and piano sim. So this is a great sim about force, distance, and work, and how this relationship can be manipulated with the ramp. So I used to actually begin my physics curriculum with investigating simple machines. And I think this is just a fun sim to introduce students to those important concepts. One of the most unique things about our simulations is this consistent structure. So all of our collection of over 120 sims, you will see that they start with a, with a really intriguing opening question and introductory video. And then they move on to an interactive sandbox environment, followed by slider-based questions, and then end with other related real-world examples. And you'll find that after using one or two of SIMS, your students are no longer having to focus their attention on how to use the digital tool. And instead, we'll be able to focus on learning the concepts, which I think is you know, much more important. So here is a closer look at the introductory video of the hot oven sim. So this sim enables students to explore the difference between heat, temperature, and thermal energy. So like all sim intro videos, the font size can be changed by clicking on the big A, little A icon. You can play and pause the video at any time. And for repeat users of the sim, the video can also be skipped by clicking the skip on the bottom left hand corner. So all of these features make it really um, kind of easy and nice to use the introductory video um, on an overhead projector, right? You can change the font to make it bigger for the students in the back to see and pause and play. Um, so kind of one idea I'd like to share with you this morning is I might project this question on a screen in my classroom and prompt students to complete a quick write as a warm up activity. So basically, right when the bell rings, students put their pen to paper for three minutes and they write whatever comes to mind in response to this question, right? What is the difference between temperature and heat? And then I would press play and walk students through the introductory video in a discussion format. So this um, next slide shows the interactive sandbox environment of the Cliff Diver Sim. And this sim allows students to explore the acceleration due to gravity. In every interactive sandbox environment, you almost, you'll almost always see one or two graphs at the top representing the situation, as you do here, as well as sliders that allow you to manipulate the basic parameters and a play button. So each slider has an information tag that can be activated to learn more. If you click on that little I, um, a pop-up with information about the slider will, will appear. And then the graphs have many features activated by the gear symbol. So if you click on the gear symbol at any graph, you will be able to get information about the graph, zoom in to see the graph more clearly, 
hide the graphs or compare two trials by clicking enable last run. So here you can see info, zoom in, hide the graph, enable last run. So I think it'd be a great exercise to project this sandbox on a screen in class. And I would hide the graphs and set the sliders a certain way. Then maybe with my students working in groups with whiteboards, I would ask them to predict what the graphs would look like based on my slider settings. And once they're all done, I would reveal the graphs and discuss and compare and contrast their predictions with the actual results. So I hope you try that one out. Um, now, the information bar at the top of every sandbox can be used to differentiate instruction for your students. So you see that black bar on the top there. Um, for students who are stuck or need more help, there is that tab right there that the arrows point to called tutorial. Now, this is really cool. It opens up to a three minute YouTube video that actually screencasts um, and carefully details how the simulation work and the concepts that are important made by yours truly. And then next to the tutorial, there is a link to the available concepts that highlight the relevant material in the CK12 website. And for those students who are up for a challenge, there are challenge me questions that provide a few related deep thinking, open-ended questions. So really what I wanna highlight here is that in this one interactive environment, students who are struggling are supported Students who are ready to move on are challenged, and all of your students are prompted to be curious and have fun. So here is a snapshot of the slider-based questions in the sprinter sim. So you can't see the animations, but they're really fun. They show a sprinter um, running around a track, and it allows students to explore friction by investigating why sprinters wear spike shoes for running. So with these slider-based questions, you receive immediate feedback on your submission, and there is a way to create new slider-based questions. So with that plus icon right there, you as the instructor can tailor the sim to your specific course or level. So I could envision prompting students to answer the slider-based questions in pairs during class. I could also see the completion of these slider-based questions as a great homework assignment. They are included in the SIM worksheet with sufficient space below each question to provide room for students to record their answers and reasoning. Okay, so this is the snapshot of the real-world examples at the end of the gone fishing chemistry simulation that I had mentioned earlier about density and floating. I think it would be really fun to prompt students to do further research on one of these examples for homework. So kind of say like, pick a question that interests you, do some research and bring a few, a few points or your findings to share with your classmates the next class period. You can also customize the simulations by adding some more real world examples. So that plus icon right there. And another idea that I have for these real-world examples is to prompt students to create their own example and, up, and upload it here, adding to our bank of community-contributed content. So I actually introduced this idea during our school year webinar, I think it was in March, and I'm excited to announce that a few teachers actually took me up on it. So if you click on that community-contributed um, tab of the Gone Fishing Sim, you'll see that there are over 25 examples that seem to be student generated. So I just think that students would get a thrill out of seeing their work displayed like this. So I hope you will try it out as well in the upcoming school year. So here's one of my favorite charts. Um, it highlights some of the most common science misconceptions, and a related sim we hope you can use to dispel it. So I know this is what gets you science teachers out of bed in the morning, right? Dispelling these deep-rooted misconceptions in your students. And there are some good ones here on this, on this list. So uh, the first one there, particles of solid have no motion, right? This is just like a really um, a deep misconception. So we have this awesome, awesome chemistry sim called Building Bridges. And it highlights 
the solid particles of the Golden Gate Bridge are actually jiggling. And it just puts this beautiful visual in your student's mind of, of what it really means to be a solid, but that, that those, those particles are still in motion. Uh, the second uh, misconception there, right, is one, it's probably the one that I would tackle at the beginning of the school year in my physics class. Mass and weight are the same thing. So you can dispel this notion by using the astronaut training chamber sim. And uh, this sim shows how the mass on various planets stays the same, but the weight or the force due to gravity differs. And this sim is super fun. It allows the students to explore the gravitational constant on like Mars or even Saturn's moon Dione. And another common misconception is um, that the gravitational force is that is the strongest force in nature, right? So we have this sim called the Portrait Gallery Sim, and I just think you can, you can use it to highlight this great class discussion on if the force of gravity is so strong, how does a picture, right, stay hanging on a wall in static equilibrium? And your students will have fun exploring that. So if we have some time, I'll go live on the site and show you these three sims and more, um, but hopefully those, those give you some good ideas of, of how to use the sim. Also, I'd just like to say it's been a really exciting time to be a science teacher. I know all of you out there probably had so much fun last year um, with all of the announcements. And we do have a lot of sims that can connect to these current events, right? This black hole sim relates to the recent Nobel Prize last year in physics that was awarded for the discovery of gravitational waves generated by two black holes. And you could even um, use this sim to discuss the difference between black holes and neutron stars, as just this last year, students detected gravitational waves generated by two neutron stars. This sim is just so beautiful. I love it. And I believe it really fosters student interest in modern science. So definitely follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Uh, the links are in the chat window on our website and throughout the CEP program. And we often use these social media platforms to provide you with CK12 content that relates to current events. One other announcement I just kind of want to end with is that we, we did have some physics teachers recently help us translate our simulations into German and Korean. And these newly translated sims are now live on our site. And there's also a help us translate link that kind of opens to a Google form where you can provide us with your contact information if you might be willing to help us translate the sims into additional languages. We would be so grateful for any help you could offer because these translations of the sims are really central in helping us achieve our mission of providing free, high quality resources to every student around the world. So I hope you consider, um, consider filling out that form. Another way you can help us out is to become part of our SIM impact studies. I recently conducted two studies to examine the difference between traditional lecture versus using an interactive simulation in teaching physics concepts in a high school classroom. And I presented the results at the American Association of Physics Teachers Winter Conference in January. Um, I just want to say these studies are really just as simple as using a sim and then having your students complete like a five question Google form. And I had a few people from the previous webinars we've had over the course of um, the CEP program this two weeks kind of email me that they were interested and really it, it can um, it just involves picking a sim that you like and kind of experimenting with using it in your class and we'll think of a way to kind of assess student learning and it will really help our sim development team um, you know enhance our sims to promote student learning so I hope you um, consider contacting us if you'd be interested so that actually concludes my Sims part of the webinar. And here's a review of everything I just covered regarding our CK12 interactive simulations. I know it was a lot of information, but really I just hope you sign up and sign in, download that free app and explore and experiment with using the Sims in your class, even that first week of school. 
as you know, because you are all amazing teachers, there really is no better way to learn than to just jump in and try it out and know that we at CK12 are here to support you. So I'll turn it back over to Lindsay at this time and then I'll be here to answer any of your questions. Thank you, Sonia. Um, most of the questions in our Q&A window, I think um, maybe it'd be beneficial if you stole the screen from me and went to the CK12 homepage because a couple of our users are asking um, kind of how to use the filter options, uh, how to find a worksheet, how to find the community contributed tab. So maybe we'll just do a few minute walkthrough here live. I know you showed them on the screen. Um, so sure, I'll let you no just get started that. on how to, how to navigate to the browse page and then I might just interrupt you a couple of times if I want you to point something out on the screen. Okay, that sounds great. So um, here is my, the CK12 homepage right hopefully familiar to all y'all out there by now and then i'm just going to scroll down and under this explore you're going to see these icons that kind of serve as entry points so on the far left is there's like a roller coaster and then a, a glass of ice water and um, it says simulation so i'm going to click there and that will kind of get me to this sims browse page and um, on the Sims browse page, I'll just kind of play around. So I think um, one of the Sims I just mentioned, let's say, was astronaut training chamber. So a few ways to, to kind of navigate through the browse page. I can just simply scroll down. Or I can use the filters. So if there's concepts, right, motion in one dimension, circular motion, I can click on that. Um, or I can just search. So if I know, let's say, mass versus weight. So these all have to do with weight. And then I find my astronaut training chamber simulation there. There's that ramp and piano sim I mentioned. Um, let's say friction. Um, here's that sprinter sim. I'll show you that one. That one's fun. So basically that search bar is just like a really nice way to search um, for what you're looking for. And also the filters or the scroll. Now, as far as the worksheets, so here's that Irwin and Ruthie sim. I'll just click on it to kind of give you a visual. So this is the sim I mentioned that highlights the concepts motion and graphing motion. And you can see you can change the robots running profile to hustle or be lazy or confused and then um, let's make Ruthie aggressive and here they're going to race and you can see there's a velocity time graph position time graph that actually responds and you can use these graphs to make some calculations now um, going back just to show you what the worksheet version of this looks like so here I'm on the browse page here's that Erwin and Ruthie sim if I click right under the tile to the arrow icon, I'm going to click right there and out pops this PDF worksheet version. So as you can see, it has kind of like a shortcut link to that specific sim. It has the opening question, who will make it to the elevator first, Erwin or Ruthie. It has all the um, text that is introduced in that introductory video information about the sliders so here's those sliders aggressive or um, hustle lazy right you can choose how the robot will run and then here are some blank graphs so um, you can really get creative with how you like to use these graphs and all of the graphs in the worksheet are blank so you could imagine um, having the students choose how they want Erwin and Ruthie to run and then sketching what the graph looked like and making their calculations. So as all of you physics teachers out there know, the um, slope of a velocity time graph is the acceleration and then the area bounded by the graph is the, um, the distance, right, that the, um, the robots have run, traveled. So, or their displacement. So the idea is you can have the students, you know, sketch these graphs and make their calculations and all the blank graphs are provided for you. And then um, I'll just show you quickly the slider based questions. Here they are with their hints and space underneath for students to do their calculations. 
I do also want to mention at this time that all of our simulations are mathematically accurate. So let's go um, quickly. And Lindsay, just interrupt me if more questions come up. But I'm going to go to the astronaut training chamber sim. So as you can see, I just use the search bar to type in the word astronaut in. Uh, real quick, this? while you're kind of on one of these pages, Sonia, of somebody mm -hmm. specifically, I know you showed the filters tab earlier. Oh, now you're past yeah. it. Oh, no. Um, no, no, it's all good. Somebody, somebody asked, um, when I select an option in the filter tab, I don't see a prompt to continue. Nothing happens. Help. I don't know okay. if that makes sense to you. Okay, let's try it out. So we got you. So here we go. So I'm going to click on filters. And basically what should happen, let's say filter by concept hit the plus and then you're basically going to click one of these kind of um, like they're almost like units right so motion in one dimension will come up with all of these concepts so what I can do is now that I'm in this kind of unit of motion in one dimension um, maybe I want to talk about um, uniform acceleration right or maybe I want to focus on graphing motion so as you can see, as I'm clicking these filters, like here are four sims that really do a nice job of highlighting graphing motion. I'm going to talk about average acceleration. Here are two sims that focus on that. Got it. Um, I think that probably helps clarify okay. for this user. Um, another question that we had was where to find the community provided sims that you showed earlier. Oh, good. Okay. So just to clarify that. So what it is, is there, the way kind of in each simulation, so I'll open the driverless car sim that I mentioned where, um, how does a self-driving car know where to go? So I'm gonna go through the introductory video, go through the sandbox. Now, there, this is an area where, you, where there is community contributed content, the slider-based questions. So the first three questions here were written um, by me and our team. Um, with regards to the sim and concepts important to the sim. Now, if you click on the community contributed tab, these questions were written by teachers out there or maybe even students that, um, and they've kind of created the new question there. So that's one place where you can access community contributed content. The second place is on the final screen, which we call the real world examples, related real world examples. So here, as you can see, the first tab will always open to CK12 content, where you'll see consistently four um, additional big questions that relate to other real world scenarios. If you can um, click on community contributed, you'll see that this is, um, there's one here that someone in, you know, out there has, has added to our bank. So basically, there are no like community contributed simulations, but there are community contributed slider based questions. That's a way to kind of customize our sims, as well as community contributed real world examples at the end of the sim. Perfect. Um, since we're approaching the hour mark, um, I'm going to steal the screen back and just do some wrap up information with all of you. And, okay. um, and then Sonia, you can check out the Q&A. If you have any questions about Plix or Sims for either Katie or Sonia, they are going to stay on and answer any of the questions. Um, but a couple things that were mentioned in this presentation of Sonia mentioned that there is an app for our simulations. You can go to ck12.org slash tools and apps or this link is in the footer of your ck12.org pages. So check that out and see how we integrate and what tools and apps we have available for you. Uh, they talked about our interactives, but if you're still curious um, about some of our other resources that we offer, the ck12.org overview page gives a great overview of all of our products, and there is a PDF flyer that you can download. Um, this is our last course session, but this afternoon here, Pacific time, we are trying out some live chats. We would love for you guys to join us. Some of you are probably already registered, but if you have not registered, Katie's going to put the links in the chat window. There they are. They just appeared. Uh, you can look at these times, they are in Pacific. These are just going to be half hour sessions where we're going to do a quick introduction from the CK12 team and then we're going to let you guys go into small groups on Zoom and you'll be able to turn on your microphones and video. Finally, I'm sure you're sick of hearing us talk and you're ready to talk yourselves. You'll be able to do that 
in these live chat sessions. Just happening today, if you're available in the next, you know, two or three hours, we'll be running them this afternoon. Uh, Katie was talking about the cafe that we have for, uh, for PLIX and for students, and then we also have the Jumpstart for Educators Cafe. We hope you're getting involved there. Our resource page for this session will have some good reviews and tips. In Google Classroom, we have a few additional handouts available as well on Plix and Sims uh, for your guys' use. And the session assignment is posted. Hopefully you guys are wrapping up your assignments. All of them are due at the end of July. Um, later today, we are launching the final on-demand session that you guys have until July 31st to complete. It includes all of the information you need to know about how you actually get your cert certificate, um, the final form that you have to fill out to request your certificate. Uh, all of that's kind of wrapping up here in the next week. Um, as always, we love your feedback. We'll, we'll chat out the direct feedback link in the window here. Uh, please tell us how things are going. And a final thank you from our team. Jumpstart at ck12.org is the email address if you need questions answered. Um, but we're gonna check out the, the Q&A window. Looks like there's just a program question right now. Um, and a request to post the live chat link as well. So we can, I think you should be seeing it in the chat window, I believe. We have a list of all of the, the sessions. Maybe we can direct message um, that. Um, looking for any questions that you guys have for Katie or for Sonia, they're both, they'll both demo anything you'd like to see about Plix or Sims. Let us know if there's anything you want them to, to take over and show you guys. I'll give you just another few minutes here to see if you have any more questions. You can tell it's Friday at the end of the program. Maybe, maybe we've answered every question. Everything they ever wanted to know about CK12 has been addressed the past couple of weeks. Uh, so the question of, of when are all of the assignments due? We want all of the, the, the assignments turned in by July 31st. We will start issuing certificates at the beginning of August. Um, in the chat windows, Katie and Sonia, when you were presenting, you might not have been able to see it, but a lot of people are talking about how excited they are, and they think this is going to be a great way to engage students. They're excited to use Plix and Sims. Um, yeah, thanks to you guys who are saying that you learned a lot this week. Um, we, we just appreciate you taking the time and getting to know CK12 better, and we look forward to getting to know our CK12 certified educators in this upcoming year. Okay, we're... We're emptying the Q&A, so goodbye, everybody. We hope to see you on live chats later on this afternoon. Um, and, oh, 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 sliding the question in here. Jessica, uh, will there be follow-up or refreshers throughout the year? Um, this has been <laughs> like drinking from a fire hose. So accurate. Um, yes, some things that we're gonna have for you. Of uh, This Google Classroom will always be available. That's a question that we've had. Of You're welcome to view any resources in there. If at any time we, we pull our information from Google Classroom, it would be in another platform for, for your viewing. Uh, we do run webinars twice a month, three times a month during the school year. And so you're able to join us for any of those. And then if you become a CK12 certified educator, we do blast out special updates and email announcements just for you guys. We'll make sure to keep you in the loop about anything that's happening with CK12. All right, we are signing off. Have a wonderful Friday, everyone.